Hi there, I'm David Williams. I'm an instructor in the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at Okanagan College and I want to show you today how differential amplifiers work. Now don't confuse differential amplifiers with differentiators which can also be built with op amps. Differentiators take the derivative of an incoming signal whereas these differential amplifiers are going to take the difference or the output anyway is going to be the output here V out is going to be proportional to the difference between V2 and V1 and what I want to show you is how that relationship comes about so here's my circuit again and in order to show how the output is proportional to the difference between V2 and V1 I'm going to make a couple of assumptions about this op amp and basically I'm going to assume that this op amp is ideal so what those assumptions mean, or what an ideal op amp means, especially or con considering this one that has the feedback going from the output back to the in inverting input, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, so that's the voltage here with respect to ground, is going to be equal to the voltage at the inverting terminal, so that's the voltage here with respect to ground. And the other assumption that I'm going to need to take, make use of is that no current flows into either one of these terminals. No current into the inverting terminal, no current into the non-inverting terminal. And so what that means is the current through R1 there is going to be equal to the current through this RF here. And it also means that the current through this R2 resistor is going to be equal to the current through the RG resistor. So I'm going to have these three conditions imposed on the circuit by assuming that my op amp here is ideal. Now in order to see how the output relates to the two inputs over here, we're going to have to make use of, or, uh, one way to go about doing this is to make use of the superposition principle. So what we're going to do is see what the output is in relationship to one of the inputs, assuming that the other input is grounded and then do the same thing for the other input. See how the output output is in relationship to V1 here when V2 V2 is, is 0. And then when we put the two of the sum of those two signals together, the sum of those two voltages together, we'll get an overall picture of what's what's going on in the circuit. So the first thing I'm going to do is just look at the output. Look at the output when it's just V1. So I'm going to short V2, so that means this voltage here at V2 is grounded, is ground, and so what is the output when it's only V, only considering V1? So in this case if we short V2 here, well that's going to end up making the non-inverting terminal ground. So this point is, is ground and we end up with just the, just an inverting, an inverting amplifier. And so we will have IR1 is equal to IRF. Since this point is, is virtual ground, IR1 will be V1 over R1. And again, since this is virtual ground, the voltage across RF will be 0 minus V out, which is just negative V out, divided by RF. And we can rearrange this equation and we get V out is equal to negative RF over R1 times V1. So I guess we should call this V out 1 because this is just the V out due to V1. So V out 1 is equal to negative RF over R1 times V1. Now what if we reintroduce V2 but we short V1. So now V1 is connected to ground here. So we short V1. And what we want to do is find out what V out is when V when V1 is shorted. So we'll call this V out 2. This is just when V out is dependent only, only on V2. So now what we want to do is figure out what V out 2 is when it's just V1, when, we, when V1 is shorted and, and it's just V2 here being applied. So again, the inverting terminal and the non-inverting terminal are going to be the, at the same voltage. So we could actually figure out what the voltage at this point is in terms of V2. So at the non-inverting terminal, that voltage is equal to V2 times Rg over R2 plus Rg, right? Because V2 
is across both R2 and RG, and so it's going to be split between R2 and RG, and the proportion that's split depends on the values of those two resistors. So V out, V voltage at the non-inverting terminal, terminal will be equal to V2 times RG over R2 plus RG. And since we have this negative feedback here, the voltage at the inverting terminal is going to be equal to the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. Now we know the voltage at this point, and so we can use the fact that we will have current going through R1 and RF, those two currents are going to be equal, so we can find out V out in or we can find out the voltage at this point in terms of, of V out. Now we can find the voltage at the inverting terminal in terms of V out because this voltage is based on what the V out is and is based on the voltage divider between R1 and RF. So V at voltage at the inverting terminal is equal to V out times R1 over R1 plus RF. So we've got one expression here for the inverting terminal voltage and another expression here for the voltage at the inverting terminal. So we can set those two equal to each other. We'll have V2 times RG over R2 plus RG is equal to V out times R1 over R1 plus RF. Now the trick is we want to we want just have this expression in terms of V out. And I guess this is the V out 2, because only due to the voltage from, from uh, V2. So just rearranging this expression, V out 2 is equal to V2 times RG over R2 plus RG times R1 plus RF over R1. So there's my expression for V out 2. Now the overall V out is equal to the voltage due to V2, voltage at the output due to V2, which is this expression, plus the voltage at V out due to V1, which is this expression. And so we get V out is equal to V2 times all of these resistor ratios here, Rg over R2 plus Rg times R1 plus RF over R1 minus V1 times RF over R1. Now this is, may look like a really big expression, but you can see here that, I mean, if these, if these resistors are set, that's just a number. That's just a number multiplying V2. So it's some, some number times V2 minus Again, RF over R1, that's just going to be some number based on the resistors, some number times V1. So V out is based on the some number times V2 minus some number times V1. So it's proportional, essentially proportional to the difference between V2 and V1. Now, in the special case where all of these resistors are equal to each other, so we've got R1 is equal to R2 is equal to RF is equal to RG, then you'll see this will be 1 over 1 over 2 times 2 over 1, so that will just be equal to 1. That, uh, this, this big resistor expression will be equal to 1. And this resistor expression will also be equal to 1. So if all those resistors are equal to each other, then the output voltage will be just the difference between V2 and V1. So there's the differential amplifier. Another special case is if R1 is equal to R2 and at the same time RF is equal to RG. But R2 and RF are not necessarily the same value. So these, these, this would be one value and these two resistors would be another value. What we would get is V out is equal to some gain which is RF over R1 times the difference between V2 and V1. So you can do the, dif to the, do the difference between those two input voltages but then also apply some amount of gain based on, based on this ratio. So hopefully you learned a little bit about differential amplifiers and I'll see you in the next video.